In three short years, Nick Lachey and Jessica Simpson changed the landscape of reality TV and catapulted them into fame and into America's sweethearts. They were the it Hollywood couple whose marriage, while brief, made a huge impact on pop culture history. Believe it or not, Nick and Jessica were only married less than four years. So what really happened behind the scenes and away from the camera that led to the destruction of their marriage? When I got married, that was it for me. That was, you know, that was my life. I was in it for life. So you never know. Hey guys, it's IQ, and today we're discussing the downfall and complete breakdown of the marriage between Jessica and Nick. We are rewinding the clocks and looking into it all. From the beginning, we're going back in time to see all the factors that contributed to the demise of their relationship. This story is about love, jealousy, resentment, and greed. A family empire, the coming of age, affairs of the heart, and a tragic demise. This is the story of Nick and Jessica. While the early 90s were dominated by grunge and rock music like the legendary Kurt Cobain of Nirvana, towards the end of the decade, the focus shifted to the resurrection of teen pop stars and pop music. Boy bands, girl bands, and solo acts, they were all blowing up. It was pop star mania. Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, Britney Spears exploded onto the scene like it had been done in the history before it. And record labels jumped at the chance to promote their latest budding artists to be the next best thing. And one of those budding artists on the horizon was Nick Lachey. Nick grew up in Ohio and loved to sing from an early age. A few years before his band 98 Degrees was created, he started his professional singing career after forming a doo-wop singing group with his best friend, Justin Jeffrey. They sang throughout the Ohio amusement park, Kings Island, where they formed a four-group quartet and would walk around the park singing to visitors. It would only be a few short years later that Nick and his friend, brother Drew, and a fellow Ohioan, Tim, would form the band 98 Degrees and sign with Motown Records. Their debut album, self-titled, was released in July 1997, and their first song on the radio was Invisible Man. And it was an instant success. It was their breakthrough hit peaking at number 12 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100. One year after their first hit, they were a legitimate, recognizable, and popular boy band. And meanwhile, a few states down was 18-year-old Jessica Simpson. Jessica grew up in Texas. Her father, Joe, was a Baptist pastor, and she would often perform in the church choir as a child. When she was 12 years old, her parents had her try out for, of all things, the Mickey Mouse Club, which probably would have been fine. She probably would have gone in any other year, but this year. It was completely horrible timing because our girl that year just happened to be at one of the most epic Mickey Mouse casting calls the competition had ever had. We're talking about Britney Spears was trying out, Christina Aguilera, Justin Timberlake, Ryan Gosling. J.C. Chazé. The most talented group of kids that I'd found in the five years of going out looking for Mouseketeers with Brittany and Justin and Christina. Oh, it was uh, pretty overwhelming to get down there and then see all these kids with this amazing talent. I actually started when I was 12 years old. I auditioned for the Mickey Mouse Club. (laughs) And I'm the one that didn't make it. But Jessica was determined to continue. And she even started to take singing lessons. Right after that, I got into voice lessons. You know, I fell in love with it then. I knew it was a career that I wanted to pursue at a very young age. I performed anywhere I possibly could, if it was in front of the family, if it was at church. It didn't matter. I always just loved to sing and belt it out. Now, after this, it would be five years later where she actually signed onto Columbia Records in 1997, which was the same year that 98 Degrees released their first album. Now, these two had no idea that the following year, their lives would collide 
and change the course of their respective lives for better and for worse forever. Nick and Jessica were introduced when both attended the Hollywood Christmas Parade in 1998. An interesting fact, both Nick and Jessica actually at one time had the same manager. And you have to remember at the time, it was Christmas of 1998, Nick was more well known as an artist who by this time had one video that was making the rounds on MTV and VH1. And Jessica was a relative unknown because she had not yet recorded a studio album and she was not known to the public in the same way. But she was out and about making the rounds with fellow artists at different events. And fate would have it that Nick and Jessica's same manager kind of ended up playing matchmaker with the two of them. The manager gave Nick a heads up about this upcoming beautiful artist that he described as talented, and Nick was intrigued. He actually first laid eyes on Jessica at the end of 1998. This was exactly one year after two major milestones. The first was Jessica had just signed with her record label the year before, and Nick's first official video with 98 Degrees had come out the year prior. So at this holiday Christmas parade, Jessica described her experience as having love at first sight. She wrote in her book, Open Book, in 1998, I met Nick Lachey at a Hollywood event. Hi, I'm Nick, he said. Hello, my life, I thought. It was love at first sight. And Jessica's like, oh my gosh, look at his butt in those pants. He is so cute. Kind of out of the corner of my eye, just like stealing looks at Jessica. And and, and I just thought she was, I thought she was dropped it gorgeous. I started dating her when she was, I guess, 18. I was 18. her boyfriend. I was 25, so I'm seven years older than her. I've been on the road and you you know, you're, you're in a band and whole, you start to like question when you're ever going to meet someone that's legitimate and who has a good, you know, good heart, who's a right. good person. And as soon as I met her, I was, you know, just blown away by her. So yeah, well, she was hot and she just had a, she had a great personality. She, you know, pretty much everything that I was, you know, looking for. In fact, she even told her parents that Nick was the kind of guy that she wanted to marry. Jessica went and told her mom, I'm going to marry this guy. And Nick went and told his mom, I'm going to marry this girl. And, uh, I told my mom, I said, I really kind of like this girl, I think. And your, you know, your job, your assignment for the night is to get me in good with this girl. And so my, his mom made sure to tell so, me that, you know, he wasn't dating anybody. And but that girl he was with, uh, yeah, just a friend, yeah, platonic just, relationship. Just a friend, just a and my mom is, I mean, she's a pit bull. Once you, once you get it going <laughs> on something, it's over. So Yeah, she, she, she was on it. That was her mission. From this point on, they were basically inseparable. They were both touring together on the road. They both made an effort in the beginning to keep things hush about their relationship. And the first year they were dating, in 1999, they were on tour together called Summer Music Mania, which featured Britney Spears and NSYNC as headliners and also included Christina Aguilera. This was actually Jessica's first televised concert. He was like in sync and Britney and very intimidating. Is it? Yeah, do you get nervous? This is my first TV thing and oh my and, goodness. But it, and nobody knows who I am, so walking out there is like, but okay, now I'm not just singing for the 17,000 people who don't know me. Now, so- it wouldn't be until two years later in the year 2000 that Nick and Jessica went public with their relationship. And what about your boyfriend? What does he make of all this? He loves it. I mean, he's in the same industry, so uh, we have to try to find time to spend, to get, spend together, but the time that we do, it just makes it even better. So. Uh, so he's a singer also? Uh-huh. Oh, really? Yeah. You're going to bring him on stage, though? Yeah, actually, I did do it with him on my album. Yeah. Um, I met Nick about a year and four months ago, and we've been dating about a year and four months. <laughs> Our first date, we actually came to this beach and we walked around. This is where I like to take Jess on all our hot dates. Come walk to the beach. Nick and I, we definitely came out with our relationship because we didn't want to lie to the public. We were going to be at the movies together holding hands and to do an interview the next day saying we're not together. It just didn't make sense. Well, since I have a boyfriend in a pop band and I do know his tattoo very well, it's Nick from 98 Degrees. 
Nick was actually featured on Jessica's Disney special, and she discussed her relationship. <laughs> that, that's my boyfriend. To see myself on a magazine, I still have to take double take. Oh, I haven't seen that one. There's me and Nick right there. <laughs> Jessica was also featured on 98 Degrees music video, My Everything. You are my everything. Nothing your love will bring. Also that year, Nick and Jessica did their first duet together called Where You Are. Basically, even before newlyweds, they made a lot of business decisions to do things together as a couple. And by this point, they had dated for around three years. And Jessica was 20 years old, which means that she had met Nick when she had just turned 18 years old. Someone sitting at home who thinks it's really cool and exciting to date Jessica Simpson. This is it. All we do is skip rocks. (laughs) Skip rocks, we go off on the beach, we act stupid. But it's fun. But it's life. During their courtship, Jessica remained chaste. And it was very important to her morals and her values to remain a virgin until she was married. And Nick had been the only person that she had ever dated. See, literally, literally, the first telephone conversation I ever had with her was probably, you know, three and a half hours long. And in that conversation, she told me that one of her biggest things was that she said, I will not have sex before before marriage. She described herself as a hopeless romantic. And it was not only a religious preference to wait, but also something generational from the women in her family. And she wanted to keep that tradition. It definitely came from the way that I was brought up. My mother um, did the same thing. My grandmother did the same thing. And, you know, everybody always thinks it's a religious thing. But really, it was just kind of not, not just a family thing, but it was like a deep, romance I'm I'm so romantic and I I loved the thought of sharing this one intimate moment with with the per- the man of my dreams the person I'm going to spend the rest of my life with her dad even gave her a chastity ring when she was a teenager so when I was 12 my dad and I you know we had talked about it and he had gave me a he gave me a purity ring things between the couple seemed to be strong but that was until Jessica made the decision in April of 2001 to break up with Nick. And the reason? She just hadn't yet experienced life or dating, and she didn't want to only have one experience with dating before she married and made a commitment to a man for her entire life. Well, I, we got together when I was 18, so he was, he's been my only love, but it was very early. So I thought that I wanted to experience the whole dating thing before I actually did settle down and uh, yeah, I mean, I'd been with her since she was 18 and I had gone to college and I had, you know, I'd been on my own a little more than she had. So it was an opportunity for her to kind of figure herself out before we talked about getting married and stuff. It wasn't until a life shattering, devastating national tragedy that Jessica realized exactly what she had been taking for granted. It's 8.52 here in New York. I'm Brian Dumble. We understand that there has been a plane crash on the uh, southern tip of Manhattan. You're looking at the uh, World Trade Center. We understand that a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. We don't know anything more than that. It was a time for deep reflection for everyone during this time. And she really assessed her life and knew that Nick was the one. We had our separation and it made us realize, you know, it made me realize Mm -hmm without him in my life, what I was missing out on. And, and I was out there searching to date other guys, yet I had the perfect guy in front of my face and it didn't really hit home and, and to me until he was out here for um, the September 11th incident. And immediately, like, I mean, he called me and immediately I wanted him to come home, like all the selfishness. I mean, that was just the worst time in my life. I was really, really selfish and I just, It was all about me, me, me. And um, that made me realize what I was about to lose. And she never wanted to be apart from him again. My guess is that Nick would have married her much sooner if she had been ready. Because Nick was seven years older than Jessica, basically close to a decade more life experience. 
which will ultimately play a factor into the demise of their marriage, but more on that later. But for now, once Jessica gave Nick the green light, it was only five months after their reunion for Nick to propose, and he planned an elaborate trip on the ocean in Hawaii. I've got the ring in my pocket. I'm just petrified we're going to hit a wave that's going to fall into the ocean. And I got one eye on the sun because I wanted to do it exactly when the sun hits the horizon, you know? And all of a sudden I go into this whole banter about, oh, you mean so much to me. And she's got this look in her face like, you know, what the heck is wrong with you? So I pulled the ring out of my pocket and right when the sun was setting, I, I proposed. I'm gay! Uh, right here, Jessica announced her amazing news to her fans on her website, Nick Lachey asked me to marry him in a very romantic way, and I said yes. So all of this really happened quickly. They were broken up, 9-11 happened, they got back together, five months later they were engaged, and then eight months after that was the wedding. But not so fast, there was actually even more drama that happened right before their nuptials were read. First, we have to remember that this is not just an ordinary wedding. This was a marriage between two signed recording artists. However, only one was legitimately established at the time. Nick was the star in the relationship, and Jessica was just starting to break into the music industry at the time of their engagement. 98 Degrees was a legitimate, well-known boy band. and Jessica, at the time, was a minor pop star, and her record sales, believe it or not, before she was on Newlyweds, was abysmal. At the time, people really discarded her as a record label copycat of Britney Spears, which is far from the truth, but no one really knew her at the time. And Jessica wasn't a dancer. She was a different kind of performer. And at that point in time, her talents and her authentic personality had not been showcased correctly to the right audience. And with that being said, Nick, being the big star of the relationship, he actually proposed to Jessica that he wanted to do a prenup. And during a meeting at the behest of both Nick and his financial advisors, they suggested to Jessica that she sign a prenup. And she was furious. According to Jessica, she exploded. And she thought marriage was supposed to be forever. And to her, this felt like blasphemy. So the only reason a prenup was not signed was because Jessica was so vehemently opposed to the idea. And Nick eventually obliged and agreed that a prenup was not needed. And that wasn't the only pre-wedding obstacle because there was also a huge issue about marriage that came up from none other than Jessica's father, Joe. Joe had been adamant with both Jessica and Nick that Jessica was far too young to get married. This is something that Joe pleaded with Nick about and told him to his face. Not only was Jessica too young, but she also had been very sheltered since she was young. And she really didn't know the experience of living as an independent adult or on her own. She was on the verge of figuring out who she was as an adult. But here she was committing her life to another. But at the end of the day, love overruled. And Nick and Jessica did what they felt they needed to do, which was to continue on with the marriage. But before they did, there was one truly important aspect that was finalized even before they got married which was the idea of pitching a reality show following the lives of the newlywed couple starting a life together. It's been said that Joe was the person who pitched the idea to MTV and then ultimately to Jessica to do the show. Who talked you into that? Um, she talked me into it. Yeah? For sure. You think? Absolutely. They approached you, Jessica? They did. Yeah. Joe's ultimate goal was to find an audience for his daughter's music career and to get her known to the public and so that everyone would get to know and fall in love with the real Jessica. And after everything was set into place, the camera started rolling and their new journey and life together all started at once. On October 26, 2002, Nick and Jessica were married at a church in Austin, Texas, in front of 350 guests. Jessica wore a beautiful custom varigwang gown, and she was serenaded by 98 degrees during the ceremony, and the cameras were rolling. And it was a beautiful event. 
And what people don't know is that there was still drama happening behind the scenes right before this moment. When Jessica's dad, Joe, gave it one last shot at the very last minute to try to have an intervention with Jessica. He tried to plead with her one last time not to marry Nick. Joe was getting ready to walk Jessica down the aisle when he stopped her and had a private conversation. And according to Jessica, he said, we don't have to do this. Now you might be wondering like, wait, wasn't he the one that proposed the newlywed idea? Cameras are rolling now. Why would he want her to back out? My thought is that Joe probably would have preferred for his daughter not to marry Nick at all, as many parents do, but sometimes you have to support your child in spite of your own wishes. So he knew that she was an adult who felt that this was her destiny to marry Nick. And while it wasn't his first preference, he probably did the second best thing, which was to support the marriage and make it as successful as it could be. Now, as you guys already know, Jessica was a hopeless romantic and she always dreamed about the fairy tale happily ever after and wedding because she truly felt that she met her Prince Charming and that they would be together forever. I wanted it to be like Romeo and Juliet. I wanted to walk down the aisle and just take it in and to have somebody so handsome standing there just waiting to be taken. It's the best feeling in the world. I was just zeroed in on Nick's eyes and we are cheese balls. We just cry. (laughs) I believe Nick and I are going to last forever. She talked about her fairy tale relationship and joked that if it didn't last, that it'll make a really good reality television show. Snippets of their wedding ended up being aired on BH1 and the full wedding was shown on their newlywed show. At the time, the only show that was also pioneering in the celebrity reality type shows were the Osbournes, who were also featured on MTV. And Newlyweds was basically a rom-com version and counterpart to that show. Nick and Jessica were nervous about the show airing as well because yes, it had the possibility of being a great decision, but also at the same time, if the public didn't like them, it could backfire in a very destructive way for their careers that they were already trying to build. But luckily for them, and for us, it was an instant hit, basically following the formula of I Love Lucy, a woman who was always up to wacky antics while her no-nonsense husband would join along, normally giving advice along the way. Now look, I'm not gonna lose my temper. No? Now just let me see the price tag. No. Price tag. (laughs) But it'll be a while for kids. It's just not the right time. Hello? Hey, baby. No, I went shopping, and you know how I needed bras and underwear? Well, I got I got two bras and two pairs of underwear, and it was $750. Why didn't you look at the price tag? I have definitely come from different, completely different backgrounds. Um, you know, I grew up, and my parents were together, and... My mom was like a stay-at-home mom. She taught aerobics in the morning and then just, you know, packed our lunches and made our beds and the whole thing. And um, Nick, uh, his parents were divorced and he had to, you know, his mom was at work, so he had to do the laundry and he had to have food on the table and that we just grew up completely different. But there was also another aspect that was completely new as they were indeed experiencing as many new things as a couple together for the first time were also shared with the world. This is a couple who had never spent a night together, meaning they never lived together. And I think everyone knows, you really don't truly know a person until you have lived with them for at least a year. And it's during the times like this when the novelty and the newness of a relationship wears off and the real you, no longer minding your P's and Q's, comes out. This is really the true test of a relationship. When you actually live both of your raw and true authentic versions of yourself, day in and day out. From the very beginning, they were filmed around the clock for months. And at the time, the television crew, they had certain stipulations and boundaries where they could and could not film. We have a lot of fun with each other and it makes working easier, I think, and and more fun when you're together. That way we don't have to miss each other. It's nice when the cameras are gone for a little bit, you know? You get get well-adjusted to them always being around and 
it, they make it fun and they don't ever overstep their bounds. They know when we want it and they back off. So we, you know, we just try to make it a comfortable atmosphere. The first two weeks of filming, are, it's, it's really kind of surreal. And then you, you start to get used to them being there. And they're actually very good about keeping space and, and trying to let you be, you know, who you are and mm -hmm. live your life the way. But it, it, you never do you know, get completely used to them being there. <laughs> well, the weirdest thing is in, in our family, when we, when we watch TV, we they have this little potted plant. And inside the potted plant is a camera that turns like this. So you'll sit down and you hear it go, you look over and it's like, Anywhere you go, it's like Big Brother, you know, they've got uh, you covered. The show ended up debuting on MTV and it was an automatic, absolute hit. They became the number two rated show on cable and it ended up being a phenomenon. The couple were instantly doing promos and press tours all over the world. Their show became so popular because they were so relatable. We saw them going to red carpet events. We saw them behind the scenes at music videos and shows and photo shoots. But at the same time, we also got to see them when they were back at home in their home lives, doing their little squabbles like every other couple behind closed doors do. And that part of the show brought it all back together that this couple could be relatable to the masses. At this point in time, they were an unstoppable duo and they were headed to begin filming their second season of the hit show. They were excited and looking forward to their future projects. Nick started his solo project away from 98 Degrees. Uh, he has a new album. He's got a spanking new wife. Give it up for our pal, Nick Lachey. Nick. Hey, how you doing? Hey. Well, how you doing? Good you to see you. Uh, you know what? Let's put you, oh, you in the middle. Be in the middle? Nick All right. All right, well, you know, Newlyweds is a hit show. Nick. Obviously, you have your album. Damien, yes, yes, and it's you got picked up for a second season, which is going to be great. Yes, and I have to know your your other half, Thank you. uh, Jessica, was seen on the cover of Rolling Stones, and she's uh, holding a mop actually. And so I'm dying to know is that is that the first? That time? was actually the first documented time that Jessica's ever held a mop. The first documented <laughs> ever, time. Okay, ever. you guys heard on Tiara. The first documented time. That was time. the first <laughs> time. But you know what? She is the housewife of the year all the same. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you're lucky too. You're doing the solo thing right now. The yeah. New solo album. Yeah. Very out. excited. Like Nick started his solo project away from 98 Degrees like, and was really looking forward to making the push to being a breakout solo star like Justin Timberlake had done before him or Jordan Knight. And Jessica was looking forward to releasing more music, working on more projects, and she was really excited about breaking into the world of acting. But what they didn't realize is that this next season would bring on its own extra and special challenges that would ultimately place a lot of stress on the couple with their growing pains, lots of changes, and the problems that would eventually slowly start to creep into their relationship that would ultimately lead to their split. This, this Us cover is my favorite, though, because it says it's fame tearing them apart, and we look so happy in the picture. Yeah. You don't think this is lasting forever, do you? Absolutely. <laughs> Although I've heard there are bets now in London. Some London gaming house is taking, you know, bets, and there's odds on how long our marriage will last. Is so. that right? It's not going to last forever. I know that. I'll uh, tell you what, either she's going to go, I need to experience another guy. Or you're just going to go, you know what? Yeah, but she had her chance. I gave her her chance. Or you're going to get fed up she with her. She was a young girl. She didn't even know. Dude, sometimes on that show, you look so annoyed with her. I mean, like, to the point, like, it's just like, what am I doing? <laughs> Man, that's too much. You'll be out of that in five years. I see. The questions. Here they are. The questions every day. He's jealous of her success. She doesn't wear a wedding ring. He's partying. She's partying. She's got a crush. He's away. Endless questions every single day about your marriage. What? Getting divorced? Absolutely no. not. Getting separated? No. Absolutely not. Trouble in the marriage? No. Nope. From all accounts, both by Nick and Jessica, looking back at the defining moments, they both believe that they should have ended the show after two seasons, because season three was a defining moment in the marriage. Third series of The Newlyweds. Uh, a lot of people say live by the sword, die by the sword. <laughs> Boy, you put your life in, under inspection like that, and this is what you get. Yeah. Last season for the two of you? Yeah. It is. You are really going back to to some measure of personal life. Yes, to keep saying. We don't, we don't remember what that is anymore, <laughs> this personal life. So we're, we're excited right. to rediscover it. Research. <laughs> yeah, what it is. According to Nick, 
He blamed the reality show as the primary culprit for their failed marriage and said the newlyweds blurred the line of who they really were. The constant attention, the 24-7 cameras, not enough alone time was starting to get to the couple. And while Jessica agreed that the show should have ended after two seasons, she doesn't believe that the show ended their marriage. I don't believe that the show is what tore our marriage apart. Um, Nick and I were very great at being together um, publicly and on camera. We were best um, at our relationship when we were singing together. I feel like we were at home in that place. But as far as doing the reality show, we just kind of had fun with it until the end, until we started having marital problems and I just can't lie to people and I felt like I was being a phony. And there were a lot of problems going on behind the scenes. Newlyweds had complicated their relationship for sure and being on a reality TV show made her feel towards the end that she was playing a character. She said that her and Nick portrayed a better relationship on TV than they did in real life. Nowadays, I see so many people performing their identities on social media, but I feel like I was a guinea pig for that. She said that they were great business partners and working in front of the camera, but when it came time to being alone, they weren't great at it anymore. They were having a hard time getting along, and they would bicker about almost everything. Jessica wrote, My childish seemed so cute and sweet when I was first with him. Seems to annoy him. Now, everything I said seems to annoy him. Wait a second, who cleans? Now, I'm not saying you're supposed to, but who cleans, Jessica? Not me. Okay. <laughs> it's a good thing she's not supposed to. She, she does. Um, Nick did for a he just, he, just, he just criticized her. <laughs> I'm so used to that. That's, right. that's, that's how he flirts. Are you me. saying, Nick? So, first thing I'm going to do is poop. <laughs> Jessica. I'm serious. Why? Because I have to. Yeah, but why do you need to tell everybody? Because I tell everybody everything. <laughs> why do you do that? Why'd you marry me? I'd rather Nothing's get changed. it over with them. Also, the fame of newlyweds catapulted Jessica into the star of the relationship. It was a role reversal since Nick was the big star going into the marriage, and now it was Jessica's turn. I didn't want to outshine him because that just wasn't what I knew. He seems so much older than me, my guide in everything. I want him to feel like he could show me all that he knew about the business, about the world. While the phones were ringing off the hook for her, it was barely ringing for Nick. If Nick acknowledged how much I was working, he would see that he wasn't. And he was too much of a hard worker to face that on. Okay, what was your training regime like for this? Oh my gosh, I had to work out six days a week, two and a half hours a day. I was on the South Beach diet, I cut sugar out. Trust me, when somebody tells you you have to be in a red bikini on a big screen, every single girl in my place would go to the gym. (laughs) Now we talked about how difficult season three of Newlyweds was for the couple, but did you know that there was barely any footage to make that season? It's because they were telling the filming crew every two seconds to stop rolling. It was that often. And those weren't the only issues. Also, Jessica was always suspicious that Nick had wandering eyes. I would accuse him of having wandering eyes, and he would rip into me, making sure I knew I was the one causing the problems in our marriage. She also admitted that she would try to be sexy for Nick because Nick liked strip clubs and the VIP treatment at bars. If I dress like those women, I thought, maybe you'll look at me. She also felt that Nick was barely present, and eventually she grew to distrust him. She said he would go out to the clubs and hang out with the single bros all the time. Or at least, this is what she read in the tabloids. Nick was basically MIA at night, and Jessica got tired of staying home and feeling like Betty Crocker. And it ended up being a perpetual cycle. There was something Nick wanted from me that I no longer had. An emptiness I couldn't fill and neither could he. We were not one of those couples that screamed at each other, let whatever fly out of our mouths, and then make mad, passionate love. No, we would yell at each other 
And then he would go out with his boys and not answer the phone. Again, a lot of the people who've been writing this have been writing Nick based on all these separations. Jessica's doing the Dukes of Hazard. You've had yeah. your own project here. You can't be together. And that is a breeding ground for trouble in a lot of marriages, not just celebrity ones. And the the kind of storms that you go through are about separation when it happens. Yeah, I don't. I I guess they got sick of writing about how in love we were and how cute we were as a couple. <laughs> That's the thing is we we really racked our brain to think of where this whole you know firestorm of of gossip came from, and and I, we haven't been able to find really one you know one instance or one public spat or there hasn't been anything, and and really we our marriage has never felt stronger and, and life has never been better than it is right now. While she suspected Nick might be cheating, Jessica herself ended up having a full-blown emotional affair with Johnny Knoxville, her co-star in the Duke's... She's really composed. I thought she would be nervous and she says she is, but she, she, she looks great on film and she looks great in those Daisy Dukes. Both Johnny and Jessica were married at the time. I felt a force drawing us together. To me, an emotional affair was worse than a physical one. It's funny, I know, because I had placed such an emphasis on sex by not having it before marriage. After I actually had sex, I understood that the emotional part was what mattered, and Johnny and I had that. We wrote these flowery love letters back and forth, often at night with Nick passed out in the bed next to me. We talked about music, and I would listen to Johnny Cash songs he suggested just to feel like we were together. It's like Johnny and I were prison pen pals, two people who wanted too much to be with each other, but we were kept apart by bars, by our stars, by our respective spouses. Their relationship was never physical, and she made it clear that she didn't leave Nick due to Johnny, but it did help her realize that her relationship to Nick was coming to an end. Nick showed up without Jessica, but let me tell you, these fans didn't seem to mind. Where is she tonight? Is she? She's in. She's in Louisiana. She's shooting. She's shooting. Yeah, yeah. She's... And Nick says he's looking forward to some quality time with his lady. Hey, is there anything you want for Christmas? I'd like to just get some time with Jessica. You know what I mean? We'll take a little vacation, just the two of us, and, and uh, enjoy each other's company a little bit. The couple had tried marriage counseling once. But she never showed up to the second session, and also during this time, both Nick and Jessica were going out, and they were partying separately. One night, Nick came home drunk and told her that her friends and parents were only around her because they were on her payroll. And this was the beginning of the end. The two were barely speaking to each other around this time. And in 2005, two days before Thanksgiving, Jessica told Nick that she wanted a divorce. And Nick was adamantly against doing it. He didn't want a divorce. And neither did her mom, who tried to convince her that they were America's couple and that she was making a mistake. But Jessica remained resolute and she moved her belongings out of the house while Nick was out of town. And he was furious. Divorce is messy. I know he came home after I moved my stuff out and was furious. Nick felt like he'd been robbed, and I know he told someone she even took my damn dog. I wish we were the kind of people who could divorce and stay friends. We weren't, and I regret the actions that hurt him. Two months later, Jessica officially filed for divorce in December of 2000. But Nick wasn't done fighting for the marriage. He showed up to her parents' house, where she was staying, and told her that he could change and begged her to take him back. Please don't leave me, I love you so much, he said. Love is not enough. If love was enough, I would stay forever, but it isn't enough. We have to like each other. We have to be friends. There was a time where incidentally, Jessica gave it one last try with Nick before she called it quits for good. And it happened when Nick was recording his album for What's Left of Me, which, is an album where he was dealing with his breakup and the heartbreak that he was going through. And he did a subsequent video in which his now wife, Vanessa, was cast to play the love interest. Jessica described the video as basically playing her, showing a woman being uncaring and cold. And she was pissed. But she also felt responsible for Nick's unhappiness and felt that she needed to fix it. And as a result, she called Nick and invited him over. He rang the bell and out of reflex, I hugged him. 
I meant it too. Despite my anger, I missed him. Nick brought over his album, and he wanted her to listen to it with him. Jessica felt numb about the entire experience because there were a lot of negative emotions in the album, and she was not in a good headspace and made the decision that night to sleep with him. I didn't know any other way to make it better, so I slept with him. I could feel his hate. The whole situation was very dark. I didn't want that energy in my house. When he walked out the door, I knew I would never see him again. Jessica was once quoted as saying in reference to her biggest money mistake, my biggest money mistake, I don't know, for some reason, I thought of my first marriage. The reason being, as you recall, there was no prenup. So during the divorce proceedings, Nick stayed absolutely resolute in what he felt was owed to him. And even though Jessica's dad firmly tried to fight the amount that Nick was asking, which supposedly was around $12 million, Jessica ended up conceding and told her dad not to worry because she would eventually make it back. But I doubt in her wildest dreams did she ever think that she would ultimately make over a billion dollars in revenue with her fashion line empire. I, th- I think it's that, that show gave me a chance to kind of show who I was. Because when you're in a band, like, you know, a boy band, nobody really knows who, who you are as a person. So although that chapter of my life is obviously closed, it's, yes. um, it did, the, the show gave me a great platform to kind of say, hey, this is who I am. Um, and got a lot of, you know, fans to this day because of the show, so. Do you ever regret doing that show? Because it did put you up in so much scrutiny. No, absolutely not. I feel like that was my way to connect with people. I feel, um, that, like, I don't even know why I would ever regret it. So although they were only together for four years, their marriage and the show will go on forever in infamy. Their names will forever be linked. And fortunately, they've moved on. They've married other partners. They now have beautiful children and families. And we wish them all nothing but the best. So there are so many relationship deep dives on my channel. If you are ready for the next deep dive, click on one of these two options or go to my channel for more.